Hello, everyone. We're the Self-Driving Vehicle Project. Um, this is Sid. That's Arya. We have Tommy, Aaron, me, and Eric. So a quick overview for our project. Um, we designed this car called Rascal, which stands for Robotic Autonomous Scale Car for Adaptive Learning. And the goal for this car is to, or the goal for our project is to assemble and document the creation of the car um, and to train it to react to a city environment. So the overall system all revolves around our neural network, which is a machine learning model. And the goal of this network is to be able to drive and steer the car based on an, an input image from the camera. Uh, data collection and processing. For our neural network, uh, we need a lot of data for it to be able to drive on its own. So essentially what we do is we use a wireless controller and drive the car around the smart city in the back. And um, essentially our goal is to create a streamlined process to get that data. And we record raw images, um, position and controller inputs in these things called ROS bags, which essentially is just a way to store data. And then we convert those to videos and CSV labels so it's easier to um, train the model on. Replay editing, um, in order to actually view the data that we collect, we create um, a simulator that we open up on a web display, which allows us to not only view the data, but like we can change the speed of it when viewing, as well as like actually edit the data and remove any bad data. And this allows us to get higher quality data, and then we can also smooth in the data for training. All right, so now that we basically recorded and edited our uh, bags, we're ready to actually start training. So we went with a convolution neural network, uh, basically uh, kind of an algorithm for machine learning. And the reason it's we're using a convolution one is so it's uh, easier, it's more effective to process images. So uh, after like a, many hundreds of iterations of models, you'll see here uh, kind of our like milestone models. So starting with our, our yellow thingy model here, which basically uh, gives the car a curb to turn if the yellow object is present. And moving on to our next model. So after that, we added a constant speed to it to basically avoid these orange bricks. However, as you can see, it's uh, not doing too well. Uh, this is because of the calibration for the turning as well as the dimensions of the images. So after we fixed that, we actually had a working uh, orange brick model. And from here, we decided to add in speed to our model. So it, the model actually outputs a speed. And we changed the output from curves to uh, four look ahead angles. And from that, we got our next model, which is our P4 model, which stands for our pure pursuit uh, path processing model, which basically we're taking these four angles and uh, we create a uh, look ahead path for the car to fall, which would be more accurate than the curve. And then from there to further improve it, we uh, created a spline from these points. So after uh, the image outputs, the model outputs uh, certain points, we aggregate the previous one as well as the current ones to create a spline, which is sort of like a uh, best fit line for the car to follow, which would uh, which basically gave us a more accurate path. And then finally, uh, moving on to our current model, which is our ultimate fisheye P4 spline model, you can see here. So basically combining all those components from our last models, as well as the uh, ad more advanced hardware, which was the fisheye camera, which we'll be going over later, we're able to create a better, better model for the car to use while driving in the smart city. And kind of understanding the model a little bit more. So while we're training, we, you know, we also want to test our models. So we put in a grad cam uh, heat map, which you can see here, which is basically a way for us to visualize the last layer of our model. And it kind of tells us the uh, regions you could see here that are actually affecting the output. And we compare that to the normalized image you see here that we actually input into our model. And it, it kind of helps us understand where the model's uh, excelling and failing and what data is actually good to use. So another another trick that we can use, since we need a lot of data, as oh, as Sid explained earlier, um, is called augmentation. So what augmentation is, is you use existing data and you manipulate it in a way that you can predict. So that way you can simulate being in another position. So as you can see here, we have a normal image. And then here, we skew the bottom of the image. And this simulates as if you're on the right. And here, if we skew the top, it simulates as if you're on the left. And so by using this, we can generate uh, more examples of 
what the car would see in different scenarios. So that way, when the model is actually in that scenario, it'll know what to do. And with this skewing, you might have seen this GIF before. Basically, um, by using the skewing, you can create a simulation where you can drive the model in a simulated environment and simulate what it would see uh, from its position based on the previous recording and by skewing it. And by doing this, we can record like our results and see how many times it would crash in the real world without actually having to have it crash in real life. Now we get to the hyperparameter tuning. Basically, you can imagine this as we train the, mod the model multiple times and we train it each on different slight tunes. And each time we train it, we get a different result, but we have the same data. And so we can see which model is the best. And you can imagine this as sort of the shape of the model and we can tune it. And basically the hyperparameter tuning modifies the model without actually modifying the data. And we used an algorithm that basically does this for ourselves without any, uh, yeah. Doing stuff. Yes, yeah, like uh, it's like making a cake. You basically have the ingredients, and they are always the same. But the way you cook the cake, for example, the temperatures or other stuff can change and differ, and so the cake will also have a different result. Since image data is crucial to our model, we also worked on camera calibration. And one application of this is that we needed a way for our car to, to determine its position in the city. So our solution is to use Aruka markers. These are these QR looking uh, visual markers that are used for a lot of computer vision applications like this one. So we detect it and we're able to update the global position of the car using the system coordinates of the city. Calibration also allows us to undistort the raw image from our new fisheye camera and turn it into a flattened one more suitable for our training. And the reason why we use the fisheye camera is simple. If you look side by side with our old camera, you see you have a much wide, wider uh, field of view. Uh, so although we don't use the old camera now for our neural network, we can use it for object positioning. So combining the depth information that we get from the camera and object detection, we can achieve object positioning. Uh, so how, for the task of object detection, we would use uh, something called YOLO, which is a object detection algorithm and training uh, on our on 2000 custom images, we can detect traffic lights. So for their final results, we, we found that our neural network is able to avoid obstacles, it's able to lane correct, and also make turns. As of right now, we don't have YOLO integrated in our model. So for future work, we would like to integrate it and use it for object detection, like traffic lights or people, and use it for braking as well. Then we would like to add a state machine. Basically, as of right now, the model is only trained to avoid blocked roads. Basically, we have those orange blocks, and it should avoid going into the lanes where the orange blocks are placed. And we would like to add uh, a state machine which can decide which road to take without having any road blocked. And the last step would be to document and assemble multiple cars and then train them on the same street and have them avoid each other and drive safely. Uh, thank you very much. We'll be having a demo in the smart city intersection in the back and we're open to questions now. Um, I think if we get more data, then we will be able to avoid people. But right now, we mainly focused on the streets. Um, I didn't really understand. So the question was how many models we need to get all of these uh, features working and we just need one model. Basically, we need enough training data to avoid the people and the model itself will be able to learn from all these features of the images and basically try to uh, learn what we wanted to do. Okay. Yeah, you, you can see how they will repeat the question. Uh, if you need to repeat this model into a project uh, Use the same model or if you have to use a different model? Um, it would, um, we would likely have to retrain on the new car because the like the city environment is like has differences from like real life, right? 
but um, like whatever you train it in, like the software would be the same. It's just that the data would be different. Do you store and process the data on the car or somewhere like in the Yeah, so uh, we record the data from the car, like from the cameras, and then we process that, and then we send it to um, a server uh, here where we actually do all the uh, training. And once we have our actual model, uh, we put that on the car and then let that uh, uh, run while it's driving. 